Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the trough. For your health and safety this evening, the fire escapes are the door that you came in, and the one marked fire exit, which I'm indicating on my left. In the unlikely event the place catches fire, please lead through one of the aforementioned apertures in an orderly manner. Do not stop to pick up your belongings and step over the drunks who may be laying on the floor. You know, it's, it's a really sad note to start on, but, um, you know, about a year ago, um, our maiden musician friend from way back, beyond, before 81, Fred Robson, you know, sadly died very suddenly. So Len and I were talking about, you know, some of the recordings I had in the, in the cupboard that which were actually made from a microphone hanging from the ceiling here, you know, onto cassette tapes years ago. And we kind of put them together as a bit of a tribute to Fred and to try and create the, recreate the atmosphere that Fred helped us create. And he was, he was a leader in the pygmosphere kind of element of the trough, I think. So we've always been trying to get them together to, to lay down some recorded tracks. And, uh, he <laughs> well, the last we one. never got around to it, did we? Oh, no. <laughs> Why did you choose the name The Fighting Pig Band? I'm, it's, it's a kind of historic thing that came out from a, we used to practice in the town hall on Sunday afternoons. And I'm not, I really just don't remember how it came up. No. It was, it was, there was some discussion about pigs or something and, and I, somebody must have said something like, don't fight a pig or something. And we used to call Fred Porky. We loved him to bits, he, 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 he turn up, we, we called him Porky. Among the many memories that the remaining fighting pig band could share, they recalled Fred's magnetism with the ladies, particularly for the song Mustang Sally, where the girls would flock towards him due to his performance prowess. He was known for telling people who requested songs that he was not a karaoke machine, a talented musician capable of playing lead and rhythm simultaneously. What would you guys say the pigmosphere is? How could you describe it? We love audience participation and nothing better when people were singing back at us and, and just involving people. And it was raw, it was full of rumps, lumps and bumps sometimes, but the, uh, it was the atmosphere created by that rawness of the music and openness, uh, you know, banter between the band and, and, and the audience. And we were trying to capture that in this hall here where we're sitting now. Uh, where many a good night has, has passed and uh, as Pete said, Fred was the, the driving force. He, he played lead but he also played Phil you know, as well as that. So he, he, he uh, um, played a lot. Uh, his participation was, uh, was, was total in it. And of course he was uh, so skilled that he could sing excellent vocals and, and play all this stuff as well. So uh, uh, when, he, uh, when he moved on, it was, um, uh, he, he took with the engine room, if you like. I think he led us astray musically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, occasionally, occasionally. <laughs> Sheer Pigmosphere holds live recordings of the band at the height of Pigmosphere from their numerous performances at the trough. As Pete described, the album shows the pigs, snorts, warts and all. The last track of the album, Down and Nearly Out, was a philosophical view of life from Fred, mixed with the memories of his mischievous youth. Fred made that, wrote that kind of one song himself, you put that as the last track on the album. What meaning can you read from that song? Fred, in his, in his kind of mischievous way, standing at the bar there one night before we, we kind of got round to doing some music, said he'd written this song and he showed us the lyrics and stuff. And we said, what's this about milk bottles? And he said, well, me and my mates going home from college in Exeter all those years ago, we used to get a bit dry on the way home, so we used to nick the milk off uh, people's uh, doorsteps to get us home. Actually, funnily enough, I was in Swindon recently, West Swindon, and in the, in the local paper there was a piece there saying, milk is disappearing off doorsteps. It had nothing to do with me, but I, I just, you know, it was, it was kind of spooky. I'm in West, in West Windham picking up the, uh, the, the Piggy CD, and here's these guys going around nicking milk. The band have played in many locations in the Falklands, including atop of Mount Kent and Mount Allison, as well as internationally. One particular fond memory was from November 1996, when the band played in Santiago's 30 degree heat. We had this shade on us. Fred couldn't fit uh, on the stage because there wasn't enough room, there was under the thingy, so he, he just stood to the side. 
and he stood there in the sun and got got uh, overheated a bit, but uh, played fantastic music. And, and we played during the lunch hour. And we had all these people who were eating their sandwiches coming around uh, dancing, and all the builders on the side of the building sitting swinging their feet, sort of uh, shaking and roaring at us. So it was it was, it was a great time. Yeah, Fred's arm Greg, got progressively red. red. That's right. I think I think he could get most of him underneath the the kind of parasol thing that yes. the Coca-Cola yeah. people put up, but his arm was out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it got, it got kind of, I seem to recall it got redder and redder, redder from that, yeah. because it was midday sun, you know. Yeah. This picture from 1972 depicts the band's earlier days, showing Pete King, Tim Winteringham, and of course Fred Robson. Now more than 30 years since the inception of the Fighting Pig Band, Pete described his fellow musician and friend as a constant factor of the band and a leading light. I was ever the trooper and uh, you know we we've all learned over the years to 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 that the show must go on and uh, and uh, Fred was a, a great proponent of that. No matter what happens, you get somebody who's drunk and falls into the middle of the band and you know we don't miss a beat. We just get out of the way of falling mic stands and cymbals and stuff like that, pick people up and put them back up. Obviously it would be very difficult to, to kind of carry on and go on to do other performances, but do you ever see yourselves kind of reuniting for another performance at any point? <laughs> We've been discussing this one, Peter. Um, more whiskey. More whiskey, I think, yes. Um, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of... Uh, I guess the answer is we'd love to, somewhere along the line. But um, the, the, there is something about Fred not being there that's going to be difficult to, to overcome. So whatever we, we do in the future will be uh, different. It has to be different because the, the, the entity that Fred was and the, the piece of the band that he was won't be there. But um, yes, we, we might end up doing something uh, not as prolific as we used to be or whatever, but uh, it would be nice to come back and do some, some music. The CD hopes to capture the essence of their performances and in many ways a reminder of the powerful presence the band held. The album immortalises the sound and atmosphere created by the Fighting Pig Band and their lead guitarist, the man who is known as Gerard Robson, known to most as Fred.